And we are back. Appreciate y'all for being here. Love y'all to pieces. We doing all right. You know, it's, it's, it's been a media circus around here the past couple of days, man. Today and yesterday, man. But we are doing just fine. We still got some work for y'all. A little bit of bi week work is going to be weird. Uh, just kind of watching football and not having Cowboys this week. Uh, but we'll definitely get it done. Um, Brian is going to have part two. It's not really a game. It's more like a conversation. It's more like an evaluation. Conversation. Yeah, conversation. Um, what we did last night, and I hope everybody had a chance to see, is uh, Botch and I kind of went through, and it's not really grading the guys. Uh, it's more about just kind of talking about where you see them big picture. Uh, you know, we get to the bye week. You kind of want to have a little bit of an assessment of where your team's at. Teams three and three. They've had three bad losses. Had a good, tough, gritty win against the uh, against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Had a nice opening day win, win against the Browns. But this team kind of is what it is right now. So just uh, wanted to kind of go through some of these guys. And tonight we're gonna we're gonna go through the offense and defensive lineman, Botch. So uh, you ready to get this thing going? Let's knock it out the park, Big Dog. You got it, man. Let's go with the first player here on the offensive line, Tyler Guyton. Assessment of Tyler Guyton through six weeks of your Cowboy season. Brian, I think no matter what, this was going to be tough. Yeah. I think no matter what, this was, this was going to be tough. We're going to talk about O-line all night, so I'm going to introduce a lot of you know constants and variables with this thing. But when I was watching his Oklahoma tape, and yeah. Brian, something that we had to figure out about ourselves when we're draft guys and you're figuring out these uh, these uh, prospects is how much time do you want to put into growth and development, you know? Sure. I'm not a big growth and development guy. I would rather a guy that know how to do everything right now. He's probably as good as he's going to be, but he's steady, and I know what he can do. Maybe some room to grow. That's the kind of player I like. I'm not mm -hmm. the biggest fan of the athlete. That's a ball of clay that got a lot of work to do, a lot of snaps to get a lot of figuring out. I'm much more of a BB fan than a Tyler Guyton fan, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I just know that Tyler Guyton had his, had his problems coming out, of, coming out of Oklahoma. You're not playing Kansas anymore. You're not playing yeah. Kansas State anymore. And a part of me early – Early in this whole thing, Brian was was like, "Man, I hate that this kid got to go through so many good players. Like his first six or five or six games of his career, he's got to go through some dudes." But Brian, you can't feel bad for the kid because that's the league that we in. That's the yeah. league that we in. If you if you play for the Cowboys, you play left tackle. We're asking you to block these guys, right? So I think he has been what I thought he's. I thought he was going to be this, Brian. This is what I thought. I thought it was going to be a rocky start. I thought he needed to be stronger. I think he needed to be bigger. I think he needed to just get more reps. He didn't have a whole bunch of reps at left tackle. He's a very raw player. Um, it's disappointing though because Cowboys normally don't miss on you know first round picks, um, yeah. but. Great athleticism. He's just not ready to play O-line just yet, Brian. This is where I went wrong with Tyler Guyton. And I love your assessment of where he was coming out of Oklahoma. Yes, sir. I think there were some questions about him. Uh, the right tackle shift to the left tackle spot. Um, I think the biggest thing this training camp, the most unfortunate thing for him was of how much time he missed when he got sick whatever he was dealing with, bronchitis, chest prop, whatever that was, where he missed a good week of practice at training camp. Okay, this is kind of where, though, I see him. I didn't think the learning curve was going to be this steep. You're right. Your assessment's right. It's really steep. The learning curve was very, very steep here for this player. And when... He missed time. I think that affected him to try and learn. There were some times out there in Oxnard, Bosch, that I was watching him block Micah Parsons with good feet, good balance, good hands, watching him block Tank Lawrence, good feet, good balance, good hands. And then he had that practice against Verse, Jared Verse and those guys with the Rams. Sure. And that was very eye-opening to me. Like, okay. He just went into survival mode here. I feel like since he had those practices with Jared Verse, he's kind of been in survival mode now. Mm. You know, that that like he's trying his best to 
kind of marry marry everything the feet the hands body position the balance all those things sure. it's been a struggle been a struggle uh some really good some really bad the problem is during the week of practice you don't always have time to sit there and completely work on your technique they're going to hey we got to get ready for a game we got to get ready for plays we got to you know we got to practice we're you know we're kind of working two hard steps stop mm -hmm. you know there's some things that he needed to go through at training camp that he didn't really get but i didn't believe the learning curve was going to be this steep and it's really steep for this guy yeah and that's and and there so what you got right now is a young left tackle who's learning on the fly mm -hmm. you know his baptism of the national football league is blocking miles garrett and you know and blocking thibodeau and yeah. block you know that's that's his baptism mm -hmm. you know in in this football game and i think that's unfortunate right now see brian what was so good about tyron smith is that he got old and his body broke down but he had yeah. but he had but he had fundamentals to fall back on no question tyler guyton doesn't have o-line fundamentals in that way not so yet. he's out there yeah. like wrestling and fighting for his life, Brian. So yeah, you're right. You're right about that. Tyler Smith, my friend. <clears throat> this is where I'm gonna start to look at my coaches for a second. Mm -hmm. This 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 kind of where I want to start to look at my coaches. I wonder how much. Well, now wait a minute. You looked at your coaches. Mm -hmm. You looked at your coaches last night talking about these wide, wide receivers. receivers. Mm -hmm. I I I I just I mean every time I mean I I I signed off last night with you. I'm like. You know what? He's right about these wide receivers in this in this offensive this play caller. Mm -hmm. You know, in the struggles. But please, as you would say, continue. I like to ask questions, Brian. I ask them to myself sometimes. Yeah. You know, I ask them to myself sometimes. I go, you know, there's this one joke I say on my channel. I say, "Hey, man, just because you're good at right guard, don't mean you 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 good at left guard." Yeah. That's just something that I right. say. Right. But Brian, what does it mean when all five of your offensive linemen seem to take a step back at the same time? Like, like, what does that mean when we all kind of struggle at the same time? We all kind of look weird and uncoordinated at the same time, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, Zach Martin, he's an old man now, but he, he you know, I, old linemen don't fall off the cliff like that, Brian Bros. It could be injury with him. But even Tyler Smith has had some weird reps at guard. And, you know, I, yeah. I, I expect him to have weird reps at, at tackle, but he's had some yeah. weird reps at guard where he's kind of lost some reps. He'll normally win. Right. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm starting to try to figure this out. I think no matter who the coach is, Guyton would have his issues, but Tyler Smith though. Right. I'm thinking I, I'm expecting dominance from him at right. this point. He was all pro type guy last year and I'm expecting him to take that and build on that. And that's a, that's another theme, Brian. I expect you to take what we did last year and build on that, but we haven't. You know, and there's this 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 word in the street that, hey, man, maybe we're not practicing hard enough. Maybe we risk yeah, guys yeah. too much. Maybe yeah. we're too caught up in the GPS numbers and all this kind of stuff. And hey, if you don't have physical practices, you're not going to play physically in the game. And Tyler yeah. Smith is a specimen, Brian Bros. He's a specimen. So I love Tyler Smith. I love him at guard, but he's not the player that I expected him to be. So if that's going to be a common theme amongst all your offensive linemen, this is where I'm going to introduce this for the first time in this show. I wonder what your coaches are doing. I wonder how much of an impact moving from Philbin to um, Solari was. Solari has been, yeah. I wonder what the impact from Colombo to Philbin was. I, I'm just I'm yeah. curious now. I'm, I'm curious about some of the movement going on. If we get a better O-line coach, what will look different? I understand yeah. Duke is across the street. Yeah. And, and, you know, he can only help you so much, but you know, Duke, Duke helps with the, Hey, when you're doing this, put your hand here. Duke yeah. doesn't help you with the scheme stuff that we do here. Right. 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 So I wonder how, how much the coaches are helping their offensive linemen. Cause I think it's weird that an all pro dude, uh, Zach is a hall of fame dude. Terrence mm -hmm. Steele was good at some point. It seems like yeah. they all took a step backwards at the same time, bro. Yeah. I think there was something I'm, I'm always leery of the coach and maybe he doesn't want to say anything you know the guy that always will say something is if you listen to his bones fossil he sure. will he will tell you how to you know he'll tell you how to rebuild the engine you know he's one of those you know he's kind of a like to talk guy and he's when you when you visit with mike solari he's like you know we'll get better we're, we're gonna get better we're gonna you know more work work more time on task we're gonna get better you know and i'm kind of like man that doesn't 
exude confidence to me that you really are going to get better. Sure. You know, uh, I, I wonder about, I, Todd Arch and I had this discussion one day and I, I do, I, I, I love Todd Archer, what he does for as a beat writer mm-hmm. covering this football team. Todd Archer told me, he goes, listen, let me just, what do you think about this, Brian? He goes, your second most important coach on the offense is the offensive line coach. It ain't the quarterback coach or the running back coach or the wide receivers coach. It's the line coach. He goes, you mess up your line coach, you could set your team back. You know, you got your offensive coordinator, but you have a line coach that doesn't get it done. I mean, you you could have – maybe you could have Ben Johnson as your line coach – or excuse me, Ben Johnson as your OC. Mm-hmm. But if their line coach ain't doing his job – then maybe the Detroit Lions ain't moving the football. Sure. And I and I and I, I agree with Archer now. I, I think the line coach is the when you start to talk about okay, hey, who are you bringing in as your offensive coordinator when you're talking to head coaches doing interviews? Mm-hmm. Well, I've got this guy in mind. Well, who's your, you know, who's your offensive line coach? Sure. You know, that should be the next question out of your mouth when you're talking about these head coach. You bring in somebody that. You bring in somebody that that I can that I could do that I do research on, and he ain't any good. I might not hire you because your offense ain't going to work if you don't have a good line coach. And Mike Solari, I is a veteran, mm-hmm. but I think you're absolutely right. There has been some regression. I I went in with the idea that this was going to be a better group, and it hasn't been. It really hasn't been, Brian. And I think who, there's, yeah, I think there's been times when you say when Tyler Smith has has shown some really good stuff, but there's been some of those reps when you watch and you're going, that doesn't look right, man. That doesn't look right. So, I, I'm with you on the I'm I'm with you on the questioning part of this, Brian. I just wrote this down as you was talking about your conversation with Archer. What's more impactful to your offensive line, the actual O line coach or the run game? coordinator what's more important to your offensive line i think the i think the o-line coach i the the coordinator the run game coordinator i think we get too much into titles of things Mm -hmm. and some of these coaches get titles that probably shouldn't be now your run game coordinator i believe is the coach that they got from college from boston college uh blasco no Blasco is Blasco is I thought they moved Blasco as a coach. I think Blasco is coaching another position. There's a bunch of moving pieces is what I'm yeah, saying, Brian. I mean, yeah. I, no, you're 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 right about that. I you know, I'm th- this is this is the side of me that when you have when you have 26 coaches, yeah. you know, this is this is where this is where I start to lose track of cuz I Blasco got moved to running backs coach. Mm-hmm. Is what happened there. And so, you know, I, but they, they went out and they got, they went out and got a coach that was the, was the offensive coordinator with the, uh, with the, with Boston college. Uh And so, you know, that's kind of where I'm like, okay, well, let's see how they go. So, okay. Of course you got Schottenheimer's your OC. Mm Mm-hmm. Blasco, you mentioned, okay, he is the, he, you're right, he's the run game coordinator and running back coach. He was an offensive line assistant. So now he's coaching running backs. Yeah. Um, you got uh, Raymond Chin Young is a uh, assistant offensive line and quality control guy. Uh, Ryan uh, Fetter. Is a quarterback, assistant quarterback, game management. You fire all them, all all them go. Yeah, uh, them do. yeah. Then you got then you guys got like Chase Hazlitt, <laughs> Chase Hazlitt, which is Jim Hazlitt's son, who Jim Hazlitt, the dad, gave Mike McCarthy a job as the OC oh, for the, the Saints. Of course. So he's he's passing game specialist, mm. and then you got passing game coordinator. The receivers, that's Robert Prince. He's highly respected. Uh, Justin Rudd is coaching operations manager, football analytics. What that mean? Okay. Steve Shimko. Okay, this is the guy I was thinking of. Steve Shimko. He's offensive assistant quality control. Well, he was a 
he was an offensive coordinator at Boston College. So, you know, you're thinking Boston College was one of the top run offenses in the league last year. In college football, they had a quarterback that was a scrambler, that was a big-time runner. Yeah. Of course, Mike Solari is your line coach. Scott Tolzien's on the quarterbacks. And Lunda Wells is doing the tight end stuff. You know, mm-hmm. so, um, you know, that's it's kind of where you're at. I mean, there's a bunch of guys there. A couple of guys are like, okay, you gave me a job back in the day and you get to be a coach guy. But to your point, you know, run game coordinator it it could be anybody it could be a young guy that you know that really doesn't have any skins on the wall i'm i'm not saying that young guys can't coach because there are a lot of really good young coaches in the league sure but i think your line coach man because that's a hands-on every single day thing yeah and i think they you know that's that's where i would go sure how about cooper bb you know I think there's some technical nuances to the to the um, center that that you know he has to get back right or he has yeah. to figure out uh, late linebacker switching gap yeah. change and stuff like that like that's the one thing that's like really get him for real for real but I yeah. think in terms of like what we've wanted like the powerful dude that can move dudes with like combos you know working with Zach working with Tyler Smith or whatnot I think Cooper BB has been that but it's just the nuanced stuff passing guys along yeah. Um, gap switches late gap switches delayed late gaps gap switches yeah that really gets them um but besides that i think cooper looks like a rookie guard that's uh moved to center i think he's doing solid yeah um i i I like where cooper bb is and i the only fault i have is you mentioned the gap switches the twist game um mccarthy talked about it monday that they're getting a lot more defensive line game stuff and that's because he's struggling with that. Mm-hmm. He's so locked in on, you know, he's so locked in. And, you know, he, there's, uh, you know, in the in the the Big 12 when he was at Kansas State, I'm sure he saw line movement, but not to the point that he's seeing on a daily basis, especially playing center. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you when, when you are late getting back over, that's a shot on the quarterback right there. Yeah. You know, you there's things you can get away playing Iowa State and Oklahoma State sure. that you're not going to get away from playing the Detroit Lions or the Baltimore Ravens or mm-hmm. New Orleans Saints. It just ain't going to happen that way. Sure. I do like what the kid's done, though. I think he's – he, you know, when he's locked on, he's locked on. Mm-hmm. He does a pretty solid job of that. Got to get him a little bit better at the second level and got to work on those gap switches that you're talking about as well. Sure. Z- Zach Martin. Man, I, I don't. I don't want to say that he just fell off a cliff, man. I don't think offensive linemen fall. Kind of off. feels like he's tumbling down the cliff right now. Yeah, a little yeah. Bit. I, I don't think offensive linemen fall off cliffs. So I'm, I'm hoping yeah. that it's an injury. I'm not hoping it's an injury. Back, but well, it's back or maybe something like that. Something yeah. like that, you know. I, I'm, I'm hoping that we, that we get a good recovery from Zach Martin because I think he has the ability to play much better than what he is right now. Yeah, they need him to play better. You know, they need that right side to be better. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, they need, they really do need him and Steele. I mean, it, it, you know, he missed some time last week, uh, Martin, with he gets a Wednesday veteran day. He gets a Thursday. He has the back. He can't practice. You know, it was going to be, hey, hopefully everything will be okay Friday, you know. So, you know, when he, he, he gets rest, good for him. But sure. he, he looks very mortal right now the way he's playing football. Sure. You know, he at one time he was, he was very much uh, one of the uh, one of the go- one of the gods of mm-hmm. of offensive line play, and now he looks very, he looks very very average yeah. for his uh, you know. But he was at such a high level, and that's the part of it that's kind of that that's kind of a, a big concern to me. Sure. Well, it's Terrence Steele. Now, Brian, if there's anybody that needs some some tough practice, yeah, Terrence Steele needs some tough practice, Brian, because he, I'll say this. I think he's a little better than Guyton. Yeah. But Terrence Steele is the older character that's got a little bit of money under his belt. You mm-hmm. know, so you expect him to do a little more than Guyton. Guyton's the rookie. You know why why Guyton's played that way. Why mm-hmm. why is Terrence Steele playing this way? And you 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 almost have to ask yourself, are we looking at, at tackles in the draft this year yeah. or next year? I mean, you 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 have to ask honest questions about that. Is Guyton gonna end up just going back to right? right tackle or something like that. You just move on. I yeah, think there's, there's a lot of people every day that I know that in, on our show, 
uh, people ask questions about that in the comments. Mm. Hey, what about playing? What about moving him, Guyton, over to tackle? Sure. Or to right tackle? Sure. You know, and I'm like, I don't think they'll do that yet. I don't think, you know, there could be a time where we're, you know, where where if there's a new staff here, maybe somebody comes in and says, you know, I think this kid's a right tackle. Sure. Talking about Guyton. Yeah. I, I play him over there, you know, kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, but I think you're 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 right about steel and you know it's there's 65 plays you grade there's five plays where you're like going wow you know and and he he the, the struggles that he's had are real sure they're they're real struggles over there it's not a it, it you know he he's he's not playing at the level that he once was mm-hmm. um and that and that part of it i think is a shame because i know that they they thought that that was going to be the case that you know, it's a hardworking kid. He, you know, everything they talk about him is super positive, but there are times where, you know, he can be a little bit of a, a little bit of a liability sure. as a blocker over there. So sure. the, if you had to just assess all five and kind of feel like, you know, where's the group, where's the starters, where, where do you see the five at? Terrible. We, we are, we are nowhere near this standard that they, that they keep talking about, that right. they, that they keep sure. mentioning. We can't run the football properly. And look, mm-hmm. even if the scheme is, is, is prehistoric, we yeah. can, we can run the damn wing T Brian. If everybody yeah. does their job, the wing T will eventually work, you know, yeah. but we run into a lot of situations where, all right, we, we got three guys doing their job and two not, you know, right. we, we have yet to play a game where the five of us are just like doing our thing. And, right. you know, uh, some people have asked me, Vice, do you think we can't open up the passing game downfield because we don't have the offensive line to do it? Yeah, and possibly. It, it could be a thing. I think you, you, you haven't opened up the passing game downfield because your play call, the head coaches being incompetent, but I don't hate the, the, the thought of that because we haven't been blocking well up front. Let me ask you one more final question before we get to some of these other offensive linemen. I want to group those other offensive linemen. I'm gonna. I'm gonna, I have a question for you about those guys. Sure. Do you think the quarterback, if we were to ask him right now, if you and I had him, just us sitting together, you, you and me and the quarterback, do you think the quarterback has confidence in the offensive line? I don't think he has confidence in the offensive line. No, I think he has confidence in. Tyler Smith. I think he has some rollover respect for Zach Martin. I think he appreciates what BB can do in tandem with, with those guys. But I think he knows that he needs to do a lot of stepping up and moving around because his tackles are, are compromised. Right. I think so too. I think if you, I think if you had him off on the side, you know, he's not going to tell you, no, I'm confident in all these guys. But I think if you pulled him to a side Mm -hmm. and just said, Hey, the, you know, the honest, the honest truth, what do you, he would say, I really, man, I feel like I exactly what you said. I feel like I got to step up. I feel like I got to move. I feel like I don't have enough time mm-hmm. to to deliver some of these passes that we need to deliver. Sure. Okay, I'm going to put these guys, I'm going to put these guys in a group. And I want you to tell me, of the uh, these are the backup guys. Mm-hmm. I want you to tell me your confidence level of each one of these guys and where and how you see them like, okay, you could play with this guy. You could play. You can't play with this guy. Sure. Okay. Okay. So that's Bass Mm -hmm. Richards Hoffman. Well, let's go. And I know you're going to get a, you're going to get a Doga back here, but I'm not going to include him in this. What we're, what we're going through in week, week seven here right now. Um, I feel like I can play a, like I can go a football game with TJ Bass at guard. Right. It won't be the best. It won't be pretty. He's going to go on some rides. You know, maybe he won't move guys down the field, but I, yeah. I, I at least feel like we can get through a whole game with TJ Bass. So just from a depth player on a scale of one to one to five, I think he's a four as a, as a depth yeah. player. Um, Hoffman, I would love for him to keep his cool, but I think he's another guy that qualifies as a solid come in. And I think he's a, I think he's another high level backup. You know, you know, Brock, okay. Hoff, you know, Hoffman yeah. can play some guard. He can play some center for you. He's right. just, he just doesn't have the physical tools as, as these other guys, Brian. Now I'm going to hold Austin Richards to a little bit of fire, Brian, because I feel like Austin Richards, I feel like we're begging him to yeah. seize an opportunity. 
Right. We're begging Austin Richards to seize an opportunity. We know the Cowboys didn't want to put uh, Tyler Smith at left tackle. We know they didn't want to do it, but they'd mm-hmm. rather put in. They'd rather put him at, at at left tackle and move two people because yeah. because they don't have faith in um, um, Austin Richards. Now, if right. they had faith in Austin Richards, this would be a great time for him to step in. Hey, we having problems with Guyton? Cool. I'm on there. Oh, we right. having problems with Terrence Steele? Hey, I just happened to play right tackle in college, in college too. Let me get some of that. I think this would be a great time for Austin Richards. Chuma's hurt. I think it'd be a great time for Austin Richards to step up and do anything. But they won't even try. They won't trust won't him. Even try. You're right. You're right. They won't even try. They won't try him when Chuma Adoga's playing bad. They won't try him when any of the when 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 people start getting hurt. Yeah. I have a zero faith in Austin Richards because the coaches see something. They won't even give him a shot. Well, it's funny. He played 11 plays the other day in the blowout. Mm -hmm. Didn't have any pressures or anything like that. He loves playing guard. Then all of a sudden things started kind of the Adoga thing kind of went down and they moved him out to tackle, Mm -hmm. you know, so they were trying to do that. But he wants to play guard. He doesn't even want to play tackle. You know, what does that even but, mean? Play, I know, but play what you want to play, play, play to get on the field. Play what the coaches tell you to play to get yeah. on the field, sir. That what is gotcha. all, all been about. Gotcha. I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. I'm, I'm totally with you on that. Okay, Mental let's toughness, go Brian. Mental toughness. Do you do, just amongst these guys, right? When you don't, you don't look at Tyler Guyton like a glass eater. You don't look at uh, uh, our guy Austin Richards as a glass eater. We don't really look no. at Terrence Steele as a glass. Eater. Brian, do you think we got a toughness problem on this offensive line? I think there's, I think it's clearly not what you had in 2016. That might've been one of the toughest lines I think you had Sure. when you look for Tyler Smith and, you know, Ron Leary, Frederick, Martin, Doug free. Yeah. You didn't, you didn't question, you didn't question that. Mm -hmm. Um, but you're right. The glass heater, you you, Detroit Lions, that line that they have tough, tough, tough. tough. as a tough line. Um, all right, defensive line. I'll save the hurt guys for last, if that's okay. Sure. How about Golston? I'll tell you what. I think Chauncey's doing what I wish <laughs> what I wish Austin Richards would do. Hey, if you have an opportunity, we got to do something with you. Show me a little something. And I think Chauncey Golston is at least kind of staying in his lane and just doing a little bit of something. He's not standing out. He's not a superstar, but he's playing against the run. He's using length. Uh, he's getting pressure here and there when he can. I think Chauncey Golson is, is doing a fantastic job as your fifth defensive end. Yeah. The thing with Golston, I kind of felt like that. I felt like watching him in Iowa and I know you saw the same thing. Mm-hmm. I thought he was going to be a really good player. Sure. I thought he was going to, I think I thought he had some of those tank Lawrence traits to his game. It's a shame it's taken him to this point, and maybe because he's having to play more. Mm. But I I agree with you. I think there. I think you're starting to see some of the things that you saw at Iowa sure. with him as a player. And I I I, I he's been he's been. I, I was a little bit worried about him being the, you know, okay, man, you're gonna have to play him a lot. He's getting exposed. No, the more he's had to play, really, the better he's gotten. Mm. So I I'm I I like what I've seen from him so far. Sure. Mozzie Smith. Hey, we need we need more from a first round pick. And yeah. we'll talk about this in draft season. How soon do you draft another uh D tackle when you just drafted one that, that that didn't work? I think that's a conversation we gotta have. You might be there. You might be there with now. Brian. You know? and, that, and that's but I will say this the year is better than what it was last year. Of course. But he needs Man, he has a great game against the Giants, and you're thinking he's got everything kind of in line, and here we go. And then he kind of falls off the map, mm-hmm. you know. I mean, there were some things in the Steelers game. You kind of the thing I and Barry, I was on with Barry Church today sure. on on the break, and we were talking, and I, Barry and I were talking about flash players, mm. you know, flash, you know, like you see like. You have a flash, and then all of a sudden it's – then you don't see him for seven plays. That's kind of what we got right now in Mozzie Smith. Got a little bit of a flash player that you'll see that, and then you're like, okay, how about some consistency there? And I think that's been a real, real problem for them right now, and you're right about it. And I think it's something that they're going to have to look at 
something's going to have to click for him and it just hasn't clicked yet. And I don't know what it is. Sure. I don't know what's going to, I know he's going to have to, they need him to play better. And there's times I could say he has played better. I don't think he's, I don't think he's this bust that everybody talked about before the season. Sure. But he, he's got to develop more consistency as a player and a, in a, in a good way, not, not a, not a flash player, be a consistent down in down out type of guy. And, I don't know if you'll ever get that from this guy now. Sure. I really don't. I really don't. Oso Diggy Zua. I've said it to you before. I'll say it again. I think Oso is really good at whooping people, but he needs to figure out the football side. He needs to figure out the slow down and find the football side, you know? Yeah. And uh, once he does that, then cool. But you have to ask yourself, because this is a contract year for Oso, I believe. It is. You have, it to, is. You have to ask yourself, is that juice – Worth the squeeze, you know. You know, yeah. do you have another handful of year? Do you have a year to pay Osa big money to develop him some more? And I, I don't know no. if you do. No, I don't know if you do. You don't. You don't. And now, now all of a sudden, we're starting to talk about defensive tackles. And here again, another position. You know, Dallas. If if things kind of end up to be a five hundred team, you know, you're looking somewhere between fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. You know, where you're picking. You know, where oh, people are like, oh, you need a running back. Well. Gosh, you might need defensive tackles. Sure, you know they might need defensive linemen again, it, and that's the unfortunate part of it. I don't know if they can afford Oso Digizua. I don't know, and I don't know. I don't know what he'll get from you know he'll he'll probably sur- surprise us. What somebody at the Commanders will pay him, or something like that, or Seattle will pay him, mm-hmm. you know, or something like that. Somebody who goes somewhere where they need where they know him. I think the I think at times he's a I think he's a, a good player. I think you're absolutely right. I think there's times where. He whips somebody. Where's where, get to the ball? Whip mm-hmm. somebody. Get to the ball. And I think that's a. I think that's a problem for him right now. Now, Brian, I want you to write this down because this. I think this is a fantastic idea for us to come back to one day. Let's go through this roster, and let's figure out which players are new coach proof. Find out which players. No matter. Oh, oh Ben Johnson in here. Robert yeah. Solomon here. What new? What new? What play, Michael Parsons is a player that's new coach proof. Yeah, a new coach could come in here, look at Oz, and be like, "Hey, Oz is not the kind of guy that I could use. I, I can't oh, no, use absolutely. a absolutely. I can't absolutely. use a, a two hundred and eighty pound three tech or whatever." I think that's a that's yeah. a that's a that's an idea for us one day, Brian. How about Wheat? I think Tyrus Wheat's another guy that's playing more than defensive end six would imply. You know, for yeah. him for him to be your sixth defensive end, I think he gave you a little bit of juice pass rush wise in a couple yeah. of these games, honestly. Um, and honestly, I think if you take away the ugly of us getting whooped by the Lions so bad, <laughs> like I don't think yeah. Tyrus Wheat and Chauncey have played horrific games. No, no. I thought it was going to be yeah. a I thought it was going to be an absolute just Disaster. Sure. I, I'm, 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 and you know what? They, I was, I was expecting the absolute worst from the edges. Sure. I was thinking there's now this, this has got no shot. You know, these guys are going to play. They're, they they normally play 16 plays. They're now playing 48 plays. Yeah. And it was not going to be good. And I can't say that. I, I think weed has been a, a pleasant surprise for me. Yeah, moments. I really do. Yeah, moments. Yep. How about Linville Joseph? Man, boy, Brian, I saw that one play where he whooped up on uh, I know the left guard last week. Uh, who was that? Was Suamala? Suamala. Boy, yeah. I was that one play. Boy, I was like, man, Linvel getting warm. Boy, he heating up. Yeah. Nah, he ain't heating up. He just <laughs> he just he's had, caught it. He's caught a play. He just caught a play. He just had yeah. a play versus Suamala. I think Linvel yeah. Joseph is an old three hundred fifty pound dude, bro. I think we I, I think we need one takes. Yeah, it's uh, the defensive tackle room is not looking very good right now. He much that. better than Jordan Phillips, though. That that that. Yeah, no, that's there's no question. You're right Phillips. about that, Jordan. I, you know what, and I to this day, and I apologize to the fans that listen to our program and take in our content because that film at Buffalo fooled me. Mm. It fooled me. Yeah. yeah, I thought, man, you're going to get an active play blocks move around, play outside the tackle box guy, Mm -mm. you know, and then he got hurt and, you know, it's, you know, now you're kind of like, yeah, what are we getting out of this? He lied to us all. He lied to us all, Brian. Yep, absolutely. How about Watkins? Carlos was interested. You know what I mean? Carlos didn't, you know, I don't think he stood out. 
I don't think he like earned anything or whatever. But Carlos mm-hmm. was better than Jordan. <laughs> he was better. Than, I keep using Jordan Phillips as the as the bar yeah. brand, but I, I think mm-hmm. he was. I think he was better than Jordan Phillips. I think he's he's earned. Let me see him one more week. You know. Sure. Sure. I kind of felt like that, you know, that maybe his best days were earlier when he was with the team. So, but he's showing he's showing some things. I mean, it's not. I mean, it's not dominant or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But to me, you watch him play, and it's like he's getting up the field. It looks like he's making movement to the ball. It just needs to get in on more plays if he can. Sure. But I, man, I don't see him winning all the time. Mm-hmm. And. You know, but if he was winning all the time, he'd be a damn starter. I think his role as a backup guy is probably where he needs to be. Do they need to get better there? I don't know if they could find better right now. But I, at least he's not he's not a liability. I, I thought he would maybe come back and be a liability. They would but he's 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 done a pretty He's done a he's done a, a a good enough job for you. You know, Brian, not great, but good enough. I think it's hilarious. I think he's the absolute opposite of Osa. I think he actually yeah. looks for the football. I think he yeah. drifts in the direction of the football. I think he just can't get off. He just he just can't whoop nobody. He can't. But he's he's good with his eyes though, Brian. He just can't get there. Yep. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right about that. Carl Lawson. Um, conditioning maybe. You think he's a conditioning issue guy? You know what? I kind of felt like early on that there were uh, there was some of that going on. I know watching Jet tape last year, he was much better against the run than he was the pass. Sure. I was hopeful that maybe he could turn back the clock and be a little bit better pass rusher. Mm-hmm. It's it's not, you know. But there's things he does play with his hands and sure. getting off blocks and things like that. But he just doesn't have. He's not the Carl Lawson of five years ago. If he's five, the Carl Lawson of five years ago, he wouldn't be on your team. You'd have to go pay him and get him and all that stuff. But he's he's his he doesn't give you enough as a pass rusher. When I feel like that he should yeah. be able to get off the ball and be a little disruptive and get some pressures, it's 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 a it's a struggle for him. It really, really is. Brian, do you think he'll be better once Parsons and Lawrence come back? Because when I do watch we Lawson, to, when you don't have to play him as much, like once, like once per drive, he he'll exactly. he'll give you a yeah, little. That's what I'm saying. You know? Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. It's it just you know you'd like to see that a ton more like back to back. Maybe he's having to play too much right now. Sure. You know, I'll tell you this: the next guy I'm going to ask you about, I think, I think, I think. Henry was pretty good. I think he KJ was. Henry. I think he, K, I'd like to see more of KJ Henry, yeah. fifth round pick, second year guy. Yeah. I, you know what? I'll take some of his reps, may, you know, him uh, instead of, and I know this is going to sound crazy, maybe him over wheat, mm. you know, on some stuff. Sure. Uh, uh, maybe not over Golston right now, but over wheat. For sure, over Lawson. Henry was very active, Brian. Very active in this very game. Very active. I they might have. This might be when you say when when guys get back, when you get Parsons back and stuff. This might be a guy that could be a very good backup player. That when you play him, fifteen to eighteen snaps, maybe more. Maybe he needs to take, like I said, maybe he needs to take some of those wheat wheat snaps. Or maybe you know uh, maybe a little bit of some Golston snaps, but I was I was pretty impressed by the way he was getting off the football. Sure, as a young as a young guy, I really I think there's something there. He doesn't really have that do. issue where he he runs into dudes, get blocked, and just kind of hang on and just stays blocked. Yeah. Like you actually yeah. see him fighting for his life a little bit. And he's moving around. I, agree. I think that could I agree. be he uh, stays active. Yeah, that could I, be I like that. That could be that yeah. could be uh, that could be valuable for you, Brian. Let me ask you a question, man. Do you think that our is it a coincidence? that our best guys are dudes that have had like full camps and off seasons. I don't think it's a coincidence at all. I, I mean, and there's a side of me that was, I sound like I'm wrong a lot, which I guess I might be. I, you know, talking about with, with, with CD and Dak and all that and how that's, you know, transpiring. I wanted to believe, man, these are two pros. They work together. They gotten better every year. They'll be fine. There's something to practice in football. And I know people out there are going, Broadus, it's just practice. Well, it matters. It, it matters. It does matter. It, it, you know, guys that have been in camp and guys that have 
work through it and all. I think there's, I think there's the guys that are, they're playing the best for you right now. Mm -hmm. I really, really do. Sure. Okay. How about Micah Parsons? We, we've had this discussion mm -hmm. about Micah Parsons. We had this discussion about Micah Parsons. It's just, and it goes back to something that people have talked about a long time ago with, okay, first off, just, I'm sorry, just tell me where you got with Micah Parsons and then I'll ask you this question I'm about to ask you. I think it's clear that he gets a, a ton of attention. Yeah. It's clear that he gets a ton of attention. I would still like him to wreck games despite of having that much attention though. You know, because yeah. yeah. Aiden Hutchinson would, would tear us up. TJ Watt, yeah. you know, had his plays. Miles yeah. Garrett had, you know, had his plays. I, I, I still yeah. think Parsons got a little bit of disappearing act in him, you know? Yeah. And I wish he didn't. I wish he didn't. And there, and there would be some games, you know, this, this would be last year or something. We'll go against the giants and just like one dude to just deal with him for the rest of the game. Yeah. Like one, one backup dude I never heard of. Just block my, yeah. Guard. Yeah. Phillips or some guy like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Tyree Phillips. So I'm, I'm just like, I just want, I want Micah to be like those other dudes that we talk about, like TJ Watt, yeah. Miles, and he's not like those. He's a linebacker. They're like true DNs or whatever. Yeah, but sure. if we're, if we're going to mention them all in that, in that conversation like that, I want them. Well, like Bosa Watt, you know, sure. I mean, he's, yeah. Sure. Yeah. And, and honestly, Brian, there's some advanced PFF metric that says Micah was like the second best run defending edge or something like that. I don't see, I don't see it like that on film. I don't necessarily see it like that on film. I, I do think it's a lot of hero ball left in him. Um, I, I, I think it's a lot of um, shooting shooting from the hip that'll compromise the yeah. man next to you. At least we know Chauncey Gosling ain't got no hero ball in him. Tyrus Weed ain't got no hero ball in him. And that's not me implying that that those guys are, are better than Micah. Micah's a superstar. Mm -hmm. Um but I think you just watch some films and some some plays on film and it just kind of jumps mm -hmm. out to you that Micah will get himself out of position sometimes. If you lose the San Francisco game and the Atlanta game, would you consider trading him? Knowing that maybe your season's probably not going to go very well. I think nothing's off the table. Yeah. I think the guy I don't know, I don't think the Cowboys honestly maybe, are looking forward to negotiating know. a 35 or 40 million dollar year contract. Sure. I don't think they are. Sure. Um I think he's going to want to be the highest paid player in the whole league or the highest yeah. non quarterback or something like that. Sure. And you've already got those dudes, both of them. So yeah, yeah Brian, I, I don't, I don't, I, I would at least take some phone calls. Yeah. I would at least take some phone calls. I think your team would be better with them, but if you lose the next two games, I mean, does not matter? Sure. No, if you know, if you're going to be a draft and develop team and you're not going to sign anybody free agency, having extra first round pick potentially the next two years would do you a world of good. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, if you're going to pick, if you're going to pick in the top 10, maybe top 12 yeah, and then pick again at 24. Ben Johnson would love that. Ben Johnson would love multiple first round picks when he first get here. Brian brought you yeah. facts. Yeah. So I, I you're right not having him would be a big loss mm. but also you i think you've made your bed i don't know i don't know how you can have and and they'll they'll work on it but they'll tell you man it's with these contracts it's tough they'll tell you that but you have a player that's the highest you know for right now the highest paid quarterback one of the highest paid receivers sure. and now going to have one of the highest paid edges it, that's that's a hard one. To, that's a hard one to get done. It's tough. It's that's tough. a really tough one. I would be okay. taking phone calls for Micah, and I would be I would taking too. phone calls for Osa. Yeah, I would. I would absolutely too. Bland, you you taking phone calls for Bland too? How much you want to well, move this thing around? How many you know? Oh how, no, that no no. Yeah. You're not wrong. I mean, you're not wrong. I mean, the problem is with the Bland one. I was hopeful that I had an idea how Carson was going to play. Sure. I why 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 do I have more problems with Diggs than I do with Bland? Mm. True. I True. mean, I I I have more problems with Diggs, and I mean problems of when I watch. I'm kind of like, man, it's tough. Yeah. 
That's tough. I watched him in a Cincinnati game a couple of years ago cover a third down route and a fourth down route and be the reason you got off the field in a key situation. Tackling, yep. Capable, very capable. Mm-hmm. And then I watched him miss with his hands the other day on Williams, and the one guy that can fly for them is running right by you. Yep. You know, and that and that 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 hurts me to see that because I know he's a better player than that. But there's a side of me that thinking, damn, I you need Bland that you need Bland to come back. You need Jordan. You know, we we did a deal today. We were grading players. Kyle Yeoman had me and Barry grading players. I think the only a player you had on defense or potential a b plus a player is jordan lewis sure everybody else i'm kind of like hmm yeah maybe yeah c c minus d d plus you know that kind of thing hmm. but um i don't know if i i don't know if anybody would take digs not with that contract they might not mm-hmm. mm. So it has to be a young player that's good enough yeah. that somebody else would want him. Uh, right. That's kind of on that uh, rookie deal. I think Parsons, yeah. I think Osa. Um, yeah. I think the next contract that you have to put out is for your left guard. Um, yeah. Besides that, everybody else, I think if if it's a situation like that and we lost the next two or three games, something like that, I think you have yeah. to consider it. I think all things are on the table. Really, And the last one here is Lawrence. Um, You know, He's a violent dude still. He's still a violent yeah. guy. You know, he's still a good run game guy. I would love for him to bring in some of them, some of them sacks he used to have. But uh, I, I yeah. guess he, you know, he's a he's a tick late on that. But he's still a pretty solid run defender, and he's taking he's taking pay cuts and all this kind of stuff. But uh, so yeah, I'm I'm fine with Lawrence for where he is. But is he a new coach? Uh, you know, uh, I forgot yeah. the the word I used earlier. But is he yeah. new? Is he new coach proof? I think a new coach come yeah. here and look at Tank Lawrence, but no, I'm good. Well, the, the, the situation too with the money and stuff like that, you know, I mean, you're going to probably get him back in what seven weeks, sure, six weeks. You know, it might, you know, it, by that by that point in time, it might be, you know, you might not want to be winning games. You might want want the tenth pick. Sure. You know, what I'm saying, mm-hmm. or get inside the ten. Yeah. All right, my friend, appreciate you, man. Man, Brian, it's appreciate always- you. It's always interesting when we do these thought exercises, Brian, because yeah, you know we, you know, sometimes we agree, sometimes we uh, disagree. You know, great minds yeah. think alike for the most yeah. part, but you know, you don't always think this way when you win it, and sometimes you it it has yeah. to be kind of doom and gloom for you to really think about how I, a player is performing. I think you have to be real careful loving your team. Sure, I think you have to be real careful of that this team's three and three, and they're playing in a division that very well could be for the taking. Sure. I think personally for you to get in the playoffs, you're going to have to win the division. Yeah. That's just me. Sure. But they're going to need, they're going to need some of these guys that we talked about tonight on the offense and defensive line. And if you, and if you look at the both groups, a lot of your problems are because of that right there, Mm -hmm. your offense and defensive line, the way they're playing right now. So we will see, we will see. Brian Bros, fantastic as always, and I can't wait to do it again tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow we got uh, running backs and linebackers. You got it, brother. Oh, you man. got it. Sounds awesome. Y'all be sure y'all tune in tomorrow at the same time. Uh, v o c h l o m b a r d i on all platforms. I ain't talking about it. but b r y a n Broad is. <laughs> He's yeah. going to wake up at 5 in the morning and answer your questions down in the comments, and he's on Twitter, uh, 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 you know, educating over there also. All right? And check him out on all, all, all his many platforms. All right? We'll catch y'all tomorrow. Love y'all to pieces. We'll catch you next time. Crown.